So look, next one, Trade Policy 102. So what I wanted to do is just give a really high level overview of some of the issues that are coming up now. I mean, my recommendation would be that there are some things here that this commission might want to delve into in a more detailed way in a future meeting. And particularly with the NAFTA stuff, um, that could be coming up, well, soon. So I'm going to talk about um, the new NAFTA and what uh, the status of it and a little bit about what's in it. Um, some of the other uh, trade um, negotiations that are ongoing. Um, President Trump's likes to be call, call himself tariff man and you know anything's game so what are some of the things that could be happening under that tariff authority and the repercussions like the lobster uh, tariffs that we faced and then I want to talk just a little bit about this uh, World Trade Organization decision on renewable energy policy that is directly addressing um, state policy um, so the next slide uh, lock is um, this is a great little graphic and if you turn to page 11 and 12 of your packet um, you'll see I took it straight out of this um, Congressional Research Service FAQ on fast track and it's a nice little graphic um, because the thing about fast track is it's fast so you know the legislative process can be slow <laughs> so the idea of fast track is once legislation is introduced uh, to, to, go, to implement a trade agreement, then there's various deadlines. And the first date that this legislation could have been introduced uh, under this system that we're under right now, um, which is counting forward from the time that it was signed by the president and then also that there was an economic analysis done, was July 9th. But the president and the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer did not submit that yet. And what is happening is that there's negotiations going on right now between members of Congress and the U.S. Trade Representative about various provisions in the new NAFTA that members of Congress would like to see changed before they're going to vote for it. So it's uncertain um, when the implementing legislation would be submitted. Uh, the trade representative and, and certain people in administration, Larry Kudlow, have said, we're going to wait until September. We're negotiating with Speaker Pelosi and her team, uh, and we will wait until those negotiations are done, so probably early September. Uh, President Trump, on the other hand, immediately after, has said, I'm getting kind of tired of waiting. Maybe I'll just send it up any time. So who knows? what's going to happen but my message to the commission is if we want to have a voice on what we think our members of congress should do about nafta the timing is pretty short either way uh, and it's not that the vote will happen the next day after it's implementing legislation goes forward they'll have some public hearings and and such but it could be a very quick um, decision and I imagine that if it does go forward you know there won't be an interest in dragging it out but you never know uh, so this is just a graphic that's worth um, taking a look at and then the next slide lock so I've kind of put all on one page just a bunch of issues that are in the new NAFTA um, and I'll just zip kind of zip through them um, the thing about tariffs and, you know, the original trade agreements were about what level do we set the tariffs at or do we get rid of them. And most of the U.S. trade agreements have been aimed at getting rid of all tariffs on any kinds of goods and also nowadays services. And that's something to think about because services is everything else in the economy. Um, services are doctors. <laughs> services are teachers. This is what's in the trade world. You know, all of these things are services. Services are garbage disposal. So just keep that in mind. Um, the original NAFTA got rid of tariffs on most things, but there's some things that it still didn't. One of them is dairy. And so one of the provisions that some people feel is a positive change in the new NAFTA would be to put limits on Canadian um, tariffs that are on Canadian, you know, American products that come into Canada, dairy products that go into Canada. So the theory being that there will be 
greater exports to Canada, and that will be helpful to the economy. Um, I will say that my organization is not in favor of this because what it does is it tries to get rid of uh, slowly something called supply management, which many dairy farmers, including in Maine, are now viewing as something that the government should uh, do because it helps maintain smaller farms particularly uh, and, and keep them going. And so there's an active policy debate about that. But you will often see, you know, this is one of the big pluses of NAFTA. The new NAFTA is it gets rid of these restrictions on dairy in Canada. But the other side is maybe the U.S. should be doing the same thing. Because what you have there is smaller farms in Ontario and Quebec. You know, they're struggling, some of them too, but they're doing a lot better and have lost fewer farms than here in the U.S. So there's actually been an active effort through the Wisconsin um, Farmers Union to go around the, the country and talk about this idea of supply management, um, which basically tamps down the amount of supply to be pretty much equal to what um, could be sold within the country or the region. Um, it's, you know, that's a very simplified way of talking about it, but we can get into a lot of detail in a meeting if people want to. Um, so anyway, that's one of the issues. I mentioned rules of origin. Um, there are provisions in the new NAFTA that increase the amount of domestic content, um, which, as I said, is viewed generally by people as a good thing, and it also sets some wage levels. Again, this only applies to the auto industry, nothing else. Um, but that is something that people are um, viewing as a positive change in the original NAFTA. On labor rules, they are definitely um, stronger labor rules, the issue that has come up with members of Congress and many um, people who look at this is that the enforcement mechanism hasn't changed at all. And the enforcement mechanism in the original NAFTA and subsequent agreements is pretty much useless. So what's happening now, and, and I can go into detail about that, but you know, essentially there it says you have to do these things, but there's like huge loopholes. And one country can even block the panel that's supposed to make the decision about this from ever meeting. So, it, you know, it's just one of these things that looks good on paper, but if it can't be enforced, then it's, it's, it's just, you know, window dressing. And so this is something that right now members of Congress are negotiating with the U.S. Trade Representative about making changes. And, of course, the U.S. Trade Representative doesn't want to open up the agreement. Mexico has already voted in favor of the existing language. Canada hasn't yet. Uh, but both countries say, we don't want you to open it up again. You know, just pass it. So, um, but that's an active negotiation going on. And then the same issue around environment is that the enforcement mechanism is also um, really ineffective. But also, um, this environment chapter is actually weaker than what was in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, the, that uh, agreement and other um, more recent trade agreements after the original NAFTA specifically mentioned a whole bunch of different multinational, um, international agreements around um, uh, environmental policies. And this uh, new NAFTA only mentions three of them, whereas there's seven or eight that are in others. So it's actually a, a weak environment chapter, and I'm not familiar with national environmental groups that are supportive of the new NAFTA because of the, this, this language and other things in the agreement are, are really of concern. Um, access to medicines, this will not be news to Dr. Case. Um, these are issues that came up in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And Indeed, the new NAFTA actually goes beyond the Trans-Pacific Partnership in making it um, more possible for drug companies to delay having generic versions of biologic medicines, which are, uh, you know, quite expensive right now and are actually taking up an increasing share of state um, and federal budgets as well as individuals. But from a state government point of view, uh, the state of Maine is spending a lot of money in, in its prescription drug programs on some of these biologics, uh, a big proportion even on just a few drugs. And the idea of this language in the new NAFTA would be to, it's basically, you know, very, in, very helpful to the profits of the drug companies. And the other part of it is that there's a separate provision that will make it more difficult to negotiate drug prices. 
Um, so those are two things, and this is another issue that members of Congress are negotiating with the Trump administration about to try to fix before they're willing to vote for this um, new agreement. Investor state dispute settlement. One of the, I would say, and this is, you know, this is me talking, um, this is the, like the best thing in the whole agreement is that it actually gets rid of investor state dispute settlement between Canada and the United States. Um, so Cook Aquaculture under this agreement couldn't sue except that they can sue for at least three years. They can get their lawsuit filed. So there's a phase in period. But, you know, that said, that's a positive thing. Unfortunately, it retains this uh, provision um, with respect to Mexico and particularly for things having to do with climate change um, for people who are concerned about adopting policies that will reduce um, climate impacts. It retains ISDS so that all of these companies can sue Mexican companies uh, uh, around you know, anything to do with energy, electricity, coal mining, any kind of mining or anything like that. So, it, yeah. Take a drink. I there, will. There was a request for a question from the audience, and I didn't know if a specific timing was something she was saying or it could go till the end. Just because it's informal, I mean, it's yeah. at the end, you know. Which, I mean, one of the submissions, I can ask questions. Yeah. So. It's up to you. I don't care. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait to the end. It, it doesn't matter if it. Sure. Okay, that's all. Yeah, okay. Same with everybody. You, we all know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. But I'm not part of the committee, so that's fine. That's yeah, like yeah. you said, no, because your request was since we're informal today. Uh, any questions that'll help us zero in on all this are great. So thanks. As long as I mean, we, we're working with the time limit. Right. We're going to end at three. I know, and I'm keeping track. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next on the list is labeling. Um, part of your packet is. If you look on page 15, this was my work product. Um, I did an analysis of the new NAFTA, and it's how it affects the ability of um, state and federal government and others to label products. And it really um, goes after the ability. And this is what I was talking about earlier about trade agreements having the effect of limiting what um, countries and states by extension, can do in terms of domestic policy. So I'm just going to, you know, flag it here. Uh, many people saw the new NAFTA as a way of fixing a problem, which was the Mexico and Canada preventing the United States from having labeling country of origin of meats. Um, the U.S. Trade Representative did not bother to even raise the issue as far as I am aware. And this has actually come back as an issue that some members of Congress, including um, Representative Golden, has raised um, in a letter that he signed. And I, yeah, I think it was fr just freshman members of the House that brought this up. But it's also been actually taken up by the AFL-CIO AFL and, so, and some um, farm groups as something that they feel like could have been fixed here because it was just Mexico and Canada that raised this issue in the first place. Um, so labeling, and, and when I talk about labeling, it's about having uh, information about nutrition on, on products, um, making it more difficult, if not impossible, to do mandatory labeling around that or notice to workers about chemicals that they're dealing with in the workplace, things like that. Um, another issue is um, food safety, and again, on the ITP website, iatp.org, there's something that's a NAFTA portal. We have all of our work there. I didn't have it lock copy it for you, but there's, you know, multiple fact sheets on the fact that food safety is going to be weakened by this, and these are some of the issues that Debbie Barker raised in her assessment, um, but things that make it more difficult to have um, routine checks across the border of uh, food safety when things come across the border, those kinds of things, and also making it more, um, making it easier to have genetically altered materials and things like that, uh, both in your food and, and, and preventing the regulation. It literally prevents the regulation of gene edited products in the same way as um, GMOs. It says that in the agreement. So this is very directive in terms of what it does. 
Um, there's digital rules, I'm not gonna get into all of that, but the bottom line is they, they actually would make it more difficult to protect privacy. I know this is an issue that the legislature tackled this year, and I believe there's carryover legislation on some other issues. Um, one of the primary things that trade agreements do is they try to prevent, quote, localization. That could be local content that you require in order to do something. It can also be like you have to have your server in the United States if you're going to do this business so that our law enforcement and everybody else can see what you're doing, okay? This agreement is against localization of all of that, and there's many provisions in here that are intended to make, um, it's to essentially di free up digital policy and, and, and digital stuff so that it can freely go across borders, which basically limits uh, your ability to protect privacy. Um, and again, there's all kinds of papers on this and experts on this that if these are issues that the commission is interested in delving into, we could put together an agenda of people that know a lot about it. I'm just gonna mention one of the things that I'm kind of the expert on because nobody else can bear to even think about it is something called <laughs> regulatory cooperation and harmonization. But this is something that's very much promoted by this agreement in a way that it has never been seen before in any agreement that the United States has signed. And it's basically a way of getting countries together before regulations are promulgated to ensure that they are, quote, harmonized. And the big concern here is that things are, quote, harmonized down to the lowest level. And the other big concern is that it's a big wide open door for corporations to have additional impact in influencing, not really in the public eye. And I've written a number of papers about this. So, you know, again, this is something that we can get into if people are interested in it. I just think it's important to know when you hear regulatory cooperation, which just sounds so lovely, that <laughs> there's a dark side to it, and most people, including, I suspect, all members of Congress don't actually know anything about this particular aspect of the agreement, and there's an entire chapter devoted to it. And unlike some provisions, this chapter is actually enforceable um, through a state-to-state -state dispute settlement mechanism. So next slide. Um, Actually, I put in a new slide. Oh, you've got it? Oh, okay, I've got it, yeah. It's not in your packet, but I just wanted to say a little bit about whether the USMCA new NAFTA benefits the economy, because this is the whole point of it, right? That is probably, the idea is that, you know, people are gonna make more money, and there's, we're gonna be able to sell more stuff and grow more things. And this is the analysis of the International Trade Commission, which says that over six years, wages will go up, a one-time increase of 0.12%, which is the same as the number of jobs that are, inc that are added in the U.S. economy every month. So just to put it in perspective, this is the most positive view of the benefits of this agreement from the U.S. International Trade Commission, and they basically say it's negligible. So I just think it's really important to be aware of this because the benefits of the original NAFTA were promoted as being really great and have turned out not to be. And there are negatives to this agreement, which I've briefly discussed right beforehand. Um, so, and there have been other analyses. The International Monetary Fund actually found that it would hurt the, the U.S. economy a little bit would help Mexico and Canada a little bit. And a lot of the benefits um, of the agreement that under the calculations, the model of the International Trade Center Commission are actually based on those digital roles that I just mentioned briefly. And so if you have any concern about those <laughs> digital rules, that's kind of the, the only reason that the new NAFTA gets over the bar to actually help the, the U.S. economy in general is based on the estimates that they, the U.S. International Trade Commission made that those getting rid of basically regulations on digital trade would, you know, have a bump up in, in economics. Okay, next slide. Um, just really quickly, there's a lot of other things that are going on. Um, there is a negotiation going on with the European Union. What I can say about that, the, I mean, the U.S. Trade Representative did go to Congress. It got 
Trade Promotion Authority under the fast track rules, so it has authority to go and negotiate this. There's a huge dispute about what they're negotiating about. So the European Union says we are not negotiating about agricultural access to, to Europe. The U.S. says, oh, yes, you are. We agree to that. Um, so this is, you know, it's unclear if anything's happening with that. But what the European Union is interested in is these uh, talks around regulatory cooperation and coherence. So to me, there, there still is concern about what could come out of that. Um, there's a potential deal with, the, Euro with um, the United Kingdom, depending what happens with Brexit. As I think everybody knows, there's you know, a huge fight that's been going on for several years now about whether and how um, the UK will get out of the European Union. If it does, it won't be bound by the rules of the European Union in terms of trade, unless there's some agreement that says they are bound. But it's looking more and more like there'll be some kind of no deal outcome, which would put a lot of pressure on them and provide an opportunity for the U.S. to swoop in and do a trade deal, but it might not be the kind of deal that we like. It might not be a high standard sort of deal, and that's something to keep an eye on, um, how that might affect Maine um, or otherwise. There's also talks going on with Japan. Um, again, these affect agriculture. There could be implications for Maine. I don't really know. And One thing that concerns me is there's talk from the U.S. Trade Representative of sort of cutting a deal without taking it back to Congress for approval, which is really uh, questionable how they can do that. But they sort of did that with Korea, and they did this sort of side agreement that... So it's hard to know, but the, it, it's unclear that, that the rules are really being followed to the extent that the rules, you know, which aren't great rules to begin with, <laughs> they're, they're not... So it's really hard to keep track of what's going on. Let's just put it that way. Um, there's been talk of other agreements. Um, and then I just want to mention, you know, President Trump has, you know, his, his big card is, well, we'll just pull out of the current NAFTA, and, you know, all at once, and, you know, that'll upset the apple cart, and everyone will agree to, you know, make these changes. And, you know, I just say it's one thing to decide not to do an agreement. It's another to have an agreement that's been in effect for over 25 years and then suddenly get out of it. And so that's a scary prospect for many businesses and, and, and for many farmers and for both Mexico and Canada. So we'll see what happens. But I just mentioning that, um, and I actually did some research about whether the president can do that or can't do that. I, I concluded he could legally. Others have concluded not. So who knows? But if you're interested in that, we can talk about it. Uh, next slide. So I just wanted to go briefly into another subject, which is the World Trade Organization. It just came down with this decision June 27th, it was announced. And they found that 10 different programs of, uh, from seven different states that promoted renewable energy, and they were everything from the biofuel that I think somebody, Steve Stanley, was talking about earlier, um, to solar credits. Um, these are programs that states did that combine economic development with renewable energy. So, you know, you might get a rebate if you um, put in, you know, you bought a solar panel, let's say, and if that solar panel was partially made with components, you know, manufactured, say, in the state of Michigan, then you would get a little bump up on your rebate, a little bit extra. You know, obviously intended to support local employment, local jobs, the local economy. Um, and so these, all of these, and, and there were others that were about installing lo labor. So, as I said, services. So uh, they also, like the Michigan one said, you know, if you use Michigan labor uh, to install this or whatever, then get a little bump up on that as well. So these were just um, found to all violate the 1994 agreement of the WTO called the General Agreement on, on Trade, on Tariffs and Trade. Anyway, the GATT, um, and because they discriminate, that goes back to that slide I had about um, national treatment, um, and you know the most favored nation and national treatment that you can't quote, discriminate against a product from another country. And just to give you the backstory on this, it just shows like you know the Obama administration went after India, claiming that India had rules that were very similar to these that promoted local development. And so then India 
went and looked at all of these state programs and said, well, you have the same programs that you're complaining about, and so they sued and, and challenged, and, and they won. So this is where trade policy, you know, doesn't seem to be benefiting either <laughs> India or the United States in terms of trying to tackle both renewable energy, climate issues, and economic development. And I just raise it here, that the next slide, um, I mean, this is not just about renewable energy. This is about any kind of economic development that does these kinds of things. So I think it's really important. Okay, I have two more slides. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to mention the WTO. Oh, could you go back one? Um, the WTO also ruled against um, country of origin labeling, and that was the case brought by ca Canada and Mexico, and it said that it was too complicated because it, you know, went into where was it born, where was it processed, where was it slaughtered, et cetera. And they said, well, that's too complicated, and it, it discriminates against Canada and Mexico producers, and they won that case. So next slide. So as Representative Hickman mentioned, and also Senator Miramont, you know, Maine has adopted some of its own country of origin. Um, it is a voluntary program. Well, sort of. I, you know, anyway, I'm not saying it runs afoul of the WTO. I don't think it does. But I just pointed out, this is where these issues really do come home to roost, if I can use a, uh, <laughs> an agricultural bad pun unintentionally. Um, and so, you know, th there's a lot of issues here that the commission could delve into as you go forward and think about, you know, both the last session but also what, um, what other policies the, the state of Maine might want to do in the future.